because after Michael went to Bahrain, he came back to do these concerts. Tell me about that, really briefly. Oh, the concert Bahrain? Oh. When he, when he did This Is It, how did you? When Michael went to England to announce he was going to do what he called his last concert, This Is It. And it was only 10 shows that he um, had told them that he would do. And as they were selling, they were selling 40, then 50. And then Michael didn't want to do 50 shows. He told me, he said, Mother, I don't want to do 50 shows. But um, he was proud to see that they had sold out so fast, but it's not, that was, he was proud of it, but it's not that he wanted to do them. And, uh, then I found out how they had structured the shows, and I kept calling him and telling him every other day, my son can't work like that. You know, because even when he was younger, when he worked, he only worked one or two shows a week, and not every other day just keep doing shows over and over. That's too much. And um, and he had, it was funny to him because he knew that I never spoke up about anything. But I was just concerned about them overworking him. He hadn't been out there um, for like 10 years or more. And um, I know he just couldn't jump in and do all those shows like that. Um, so I felt proud that um, they had sold those many shows and that he could, but I wasn't happy about the way they had him structured for him to do, and I wasn't happy about the number of shows they wanted him to do. How did Michael feel when, to, to know that even after 10 years being off the stage, he was still able to sell out not one, but, you know, not one or 10, but 50 shows? Well, he felt good. He felt good about it. He called me, and he told me, guess what? I said, what? He said, um... Now it's up to 50 shows, Mother. I said, what? <laughs> I said, are you going to do them? He said, I can't do those 50 shows. I only committed on 10. But they kept on after him until I, I don't know if he signed for 50 or what, but uh, I know they were trying to get him to do it. And they had sold. I think the pressure was they had sold these shows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But do you think he felt like he was back on top? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I meant that he did. Because he was still able to sell out 50 shows. Yes, after he hadn't been out there for years. Yeah. Wow. And then after watching This Is It, I don't know if you've seen it, but the shows would have been amazing. I haven't seen it. I I can't bring myself to watch it. Um, his children... They had prepared for them three times, three different times. They And we got them dressed to go down to see it because this was pri private showings for them since they didn't go, you know. They said, okay, we'll watch it. and Got time for them to leave. And they said, Grandma, we can't, we can't watch it because they hadn't gotten over their father's death. They just felt that they couldn't do it. And they haven't seen it to this day, and I haven't seen it. But I think I, I might can watch it now. I'm not too sure, but um, it's it's just something hard to do. The worst thing in the world is to lose a child, and um, he should have been burying me. I shouldn't have been burying my child, but. That's just how it is sometimes. When you you were worried about him, you thought he couldn't do 50 shows. So when you got a uh, phone call to come down to the hospital on that day, did you know in your heart something was wrong? No, my husband had called me that <clears throat> morning, but... Uh, I wasn't there. They answered the phone. I was out in field service because uh, everybody knew that I'm a Jehovah's Witness and we do this. Um, and when I got back home, they kept calling, come to the hospital. Because my husband had called me and told me, one of the fans that was hanging around the house, he said, um, 
they called me and they told me that, that somebody came out of Michael's house and got into an am uh, in a gurney and they got into an ambulance and I, I said, why are you calling me? I said, it could have been anybody, it didn't have to be Michael. And I was kind of, you know, you're, you're worried and you're upset with them anyway, you know, for doing that. And um, so they said, um, when they called later, they told me come to the hospital and I came and I, I just thought that he might have been sick or something. And I, when I got there, nobody was talking. Everybody didn't want to talk about what was going on. And so they finally took me into a room with me and my nephew. And um, they told me a story, and I said, you know how you are. You want to know, well, get to the, what happened, what happened? And I said, then I said, well, did he make it? Nobody said anything. And then finally they said, no, he didn't make it. I, I don't know, after that, I just, I guess, I was start screaming and I blacked out or something. But I didn't black out, but I just, it was like I was in another world. I um, That's the most hurting thing in the world to hear that you had one of your children have died. Looking back on his life now, do you, do you, do you wish that he, he was never a star? Pardon? Do you wish that he had a different life growing up? Was it worth it? Uh, no, I never, you know, of all this, I never thought about wish he had a different life. He loved the life he led. He would always say that, that he um, missed his childhood, but he wouldn't have traded anything for what he was. No, I don't have any regrets about Michael's life because he loved the life that he lived. And, um, and he loved singing. I know he talked about he missed out on his childhood. He had some childhood, but not as much as he should, should have had because he had, he'd been singing ever since he was like five years old. Uh, but um, I can remember going to um, one of the um, assemblies at, uh, he was only in kindergarten, and he sang Climb Every Mountain. And um, And his grandfather had attended with me. And I looked over, and Dad was crying like a baby. <laughs> this little boy up there singing his heart out. But anyway, um, I'm sorry. You can strike that. No, I mean, you. you can. Pardon? When you think about Michael today, what memories? Come? You know what? Even this morning, every morning that I wake up, my baby is on my mind. Oh, oh gosh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I don't. Go. I didn't intend to do this. I'm okay. I would like to remember people to remember Michael of what a kind and giving person he was. And um, I 
I can't think of anything else to say because there's been so much out there lies on there about him. I um I don't even want to mention them. I just want them to remember him as Michael Jackson was a loving and kind person, and he had so much that they had lied on him about, and and had the most of the people was he was just misunderstood, and um, he was all about giving and helping and being kind to people. And as far as um, all this other stuff. Just forget that part. What were you trying to say? I was just trying to say, um, I was just talking about the, um, I don't like to talk about that, let the people know what he did. I just want you to help people get a better understanding of him. They called him Waco Jacko. Um, that was, um, you know, um, there's no way Michael could have been a wacko or whatever they try to call him, wacko jacko. He didn't get as far as he did by being stupid or crazy. So they can stop that. It's just what they wanted to say to sell papers, that's all. And these tabloids are the reason why all this stuff was out there on him. When I think about Michael, looking back on his life, there's not a day in my life that I don't think about him. Uh, and it's like when, when people say that their life flash before their face, you know, when something's going to happen. This is how I look at Michael. Um, I remember the very first cry when the doctor slapped him on his backside. Up until his death. And almost every day, I should say every day, even this morning, that's the first thing I think about. I know I'll get over it with prayer and everything, but right now it's just... It's hard because he, I guess every child means a lot to their mother and my child meant so much to me. And by me still being here and he's gone, I, he, he should have been the one putting me away, not me being there listening to them reading the stories of him and he won't be back anymore until but I believe in the resurrection and I do think I will see my son again and I'm praying for that day